So today we're going to be doing Let's Get Started. And uh, when I was a little boy, my mom used to always give me a list of things to do every day. So today I've got my list of things to do and I'm going to share them with you. And hopefully this will give you what you need to get started as a full-time RV or work camper. We will be putting all this information will be below the video. And then if you have any questions, please uh, make a comment and I'll try to answer all the, uh, the questions that we have. Um, this, this vlog is going to be about more about helping people to get into this lifestyle than, than trying to cruise around and show you guys sites and stuff like that. There's plenty of people that are doing that and are doing a great job at it. We might do it once in a while, but our goal is to help you get an RV, get it set up, get your personal effects handled. We're going to, we're going to have videos coming real soon. that will be about how to get rid of your stuff, uh, maybe get a storage, that kind of stuff. So hang in there. We're uh, working on more things. We hopefully this is working good. We got a new camera. We got new microphones. When we first started out and we did that video with Brian, we had nothing. So that's why it's taken a little longer to get to this point. But I hope you understand, and I hope that now that we're learning how to edit, we just got um, the edit stuff, and, and we're trying to get everything worked out so we can do this as well as possible for a couple of uneducated uh, vloggers. But hopefully as time goes on, we'll get better. And today is going to be one of those kind of days where it's uh, uh, the nuts and bolts of the RV lifestyle. I call this video, Let's Get Started, and the reason is is these are all the things that you really don't want to have to think about, but you're going to need to do in order to live this lifestyle to its fullest and also be able to uh, to get paid and, and all those type of things. So let's get started. The first thing that um, I would suggest for you to do is start working on making sure you have an original copy or a, a certified copy of your birth certificate. That's going to be for your employment. Um, and other things you never know it's just good paperwork to have around um, also your social security card and not the the stub it's got to be the original social security card with the all the blue goodies on it and everything if you don't have one of those you'll have to go apply for an original through the social security office and it takes a little time to get so you don't want to wait till the last moment and pull out without it because you might need that for your job also the main thing that we found, as far as paperwork goes, that kind of trumps everything else, is our passports. Um, it takes, I believe, five to six weeks to get your passport, and now you can get just the little card. You don't have to have the big booklet. We do have the big booklets, but it's cheaper to get the little card, and it takes some time, but it will have your social, will have your information on it. And that's what the employers are really, when you show them that, it's kind of like that takes care of business. You don't have to do anything else. You got your, your passport. The government has already certified your birth certificate, your social, and all those type of things. If you're an American citizen. Everything that needs to be covered for you is going to be done on that passport. You want to have that uh, for your jobs. And most of your companies, that's what they're going to ask for. They're going to ask for documentation, and a passport's going to be the best thing you could have. Also, um, proof of your education. So if you have a high school diploma, you want to make sure you have that. If you have any kind of college degrees, you're going to want to have that. When you go to like work at Amazon, um, if you work there and you have, say, a bachelor's degree, a lot of times that can buy you a better position in the company, an easier job. You won't be, you know, filling boxes and huffing product and stuff. You might be uh, just following along, making sure things are flowing properly and running a computer, maybe dealing with some of the associates there. So you want to have your proof of education. Now, if you, Amazon's one of those ones, if you don't have a high school diploma, they, I don't know if they're still doing this, but they wouldn't hire you without having a high school diploma. So if you don't have a high school diploma, you're going to want to have your GED. So if you don't, if you don't have that, you want to work on getting your GED. These are these are not have tos. Um, I'm not saying by any means it's the only way to do this thing, but um, it definitely will make your life a lot easier on this level. This is what mainly what you're going to need as far as your jobs go. Next thing is mail forwarding. Um, if you're 
we're from California. We didn't want to register our vehicles out of California. Someday I'll share with you what it's like driving around the country with California license plates. But we wanted not to register our vehicles or have our driver's licenses out of California. So we chose to go to South Dakota and we went to a place called Your Best Address in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It runs, I think it's about $144 a year now. They raise it, it used to be $120. Um, if you decide to go there, mention my name because then I'll get a free month. But um, they will handle all your registration of your vehicles. You can get everything registered there. You can get your insurance there. You can do all that kind of stuff. There's no smog checks, no vehicle inspections. Um, it's pretty much you just submit your paperwork and pay your fees and they send you your license plates. Also, to get your driver's license there, which we have our driver's licenses, and we're able to vote, which we don't vote in local things, but we do the national stuff. Um, you have to go there. You have to go there one day every five years. So when we, we travel, we go to do the, the uh, sugar beets. Usually what we'll do as soon as sugar beets is over, we travel down to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is right on the same highway as sugar beets. And we'll spend the night in Tower Campground. We go over to the DMV. We do our eye check, and they give us our license. I don't even think they give us a written test. And uh, maybe 45 minutes, and you're out of there, and now you're good for another five years. It's a really good thing to do as far as I'm concerned is having everything out of South Dakota because there's not a lot of restrictions. Now, if, if, you, uh, if you want to, there's a... a club, an RV club called the Escapees, which we belong to, and they have a facility out of South Dakota, and they also have one out of Livingston, Texas. So by joining the club, you can use those services. They'll also, they mail your mail, you pay your, your yearly fee, and then you give them like $50, and that's for your uh, postal service, you know, for, you know, sending everything out, your fees for that, and, uh, and then every time you receive a package, it will will have your balance of how much you have left on your account as far as mailing out. So when you get down to like ten dollars, we usually send them another fifty dollars. And I'd say we, if we set if we do fifty dollars a year in postal fees because we don't we don't have stuff sent here all the time. Most of our stuff is all done electronically over the internet. So. We don't usually, well, we, we get our W-2s or, you know, and all that kind of stuff comes from there. But pretty much, other than a few magazines and, and just basic, you know, stuff, they'll they'll toss all the advertisement stuff. But the things that you might want to keep, they, they send to you. Let's see, what else do we have here? Another thing we did before we ever got on the road is we signed up for Work Camper News. So, and that's spelled W-O-R-K-A-M-P-E-R news.com. And what that is, is that is, a, is an organization where um, companies and campgrounds and all different kinds of stuff, they go on there and they put little um, advertisements for employees. And you can, you go on there and you look and then you can email them or you can call them and uh, give them your resume and talk and stuff like that. And that's one thing you should do in the beginning is you can actually create a resume and put it on Work Camper News. And then that way the employers, if they just want to go through and look at resumes and try to find someone, now we get offered jobs all the time. We just got one yesterday. And, um, but the, one of the tricks of it is, is that once your resume is on there you, and, and you know you're going to be looking for a job pretty soon, you just go over there and you just – change one letter or anything, and it puts you right back in the top of the list. So when the employers go on to look, they'll see your resume as one of the first ones in there. So that kind of helps you with getting more response to your resume. Also, like I say, you get a list every day. Um, sometimes there's 15 jobs, sometimes there's two or three. But every five days a week, you'll get a list of jobs, and you kind of get a feel for things, and you, you learn how to read those things, and um, some they just want volunteers, some they pay you and, and give you a free campsite, some want, to, want you to pay a little bit for a campsite, some people want you to pay too much for a campsite. So you, it kind of gives you an early education. So like getting your, your uh, mailbox, so you start switching things over there, 
you want to get work camper news there are other free things online but they don't have near the response that you'll get off of work camper news it runs around forty dollars a year for that there are some expenses to this cheaper lifestyle but you know you do one job you work a few hours and that's covered for the year so it's well worth it and and usually the better jobs are going to be on there um, that's how we found out about Amazon. That's how we found out about a lot of jobs that we're, we've done on there. A lot of word to mouth, too. We're in our eighth year doing this, but we still keep work camper news because there's always new things coming out, new opportunities coming out. Next thing, if you have pets, you want to make sure your pets have all their vaccinations and rabies shots and all those type of things and that you have all the certificates of it. Now, to license your pets is going to be a tough thing to do uh, because you're not really staying in any one place. So we just go like PetSmart or somewhere like that when we had our dog, which we don't have him anymore. But uh, you get you get the tags with the information, your phone number, or put, you know, what kind of RV you have in the campground or something, just in case your dog or cat get away from you and, you, you know, you want to get them back most of the time. Anyway, so... Um, you want to have that, have all their shots. If someone gets bit or scratched or some stupid thing, people are always looking for a reason to sue. So you want to make sure that you have all that stuff up to date and you have proof that it is done. That's an important thing to do. Um, another question I've gotten a few times with um, uh, just off the one video that we did is medical insurance. Um, I know that um, medical insurance can be extremely expensive. Um, when, when they first started the Obamacare thing, the wife and I looked into it, and I mean, there was no way we could afford it. I mean, not, not even close. And then if we were to get sick, I mean, we'd be selling our motor home to pay the deductible. So my wife and, and I, um, we're Christians. And we're not preachers, but we're Christians. And we try to live the lifestyle as much as possible. And there's a organization called Liberty Health Share, and we belong to this. And it rents us around $300 a month. We have a $1,000 deductible, and we're both entitled to get a free physical and complete checkup every year. Another thing that's really good about this organization is, is it's good everywhere in the country. You can pick your own doctors. Um, you, you're, not, you're not forced to go anywhere. You're free to go anywhere which makes a big difference. But the obligation to get into that is that you must be a Christian. And I'm not asking anyone to change their belief system to get medical insurance. I'm sure there's other organizations out there that are similar to this that don't have those requirements. But for us, it was a no-brainer. Um, the company is really solid. It's financially sound. We have some friends that we introduced to it. And, I mean, they go to the doctor more times a year, a lot more than we do, and they love it. They say they pay awesome. They can go to their, any doctor they want. They cover everything. Um, it's it's a really good thing to do. So people that are have been asking me, that's who we use. Uh, good place to go. Um, also, speaking of that, your medications. He, uh, My friend, he has uh, blood pressure or some kind of medications he has to take. And his suggestion, he has a doctor that he goes to every year where we, we came. We actually lived in the same town and been friends for years and years. And we go back there every year because when we go to do Christmas trees, it's kind of on our way. And he stops and they go see their doctor. And their doctor is, is uh, aware of their lifestyle and how they're living. And they get, they get checked out and then they get loaded up with prescriptions. And then they'll get usually a year full of prescriptions for refills and they take these and then they go to Walmart and Walmart's really good about transferring the prescriptions and all that kind of stuff. So that's how they get away with that. You don't want, if you're a diabetic or you have heart problems or something, you don't want to be 1500 miles away from your doctor and find out you just ran out of medication and you don't have a fresh prescription. So you want to talk to your doctor about that. You want to get that straightened out ahead of time. That will give you, uh, a big head start as far as your health goes. Also, I was talking about the escapees. Uh, escapees, FMC, um, those type of clubs, normally they'll have a, like a camping thing or, you know, 
part of their um, uh, club. And like the escapees, they have their own campgrounds, plus they have affiliations with campgrounds like in Branson, Missouri, and a bunch of them cross country. If you're going to spend time, a lot of time traveling and going to campgrounds, escapees or the FMC, one of those those organizations would be really good to join. They're not too much, they're 30 or $40 a year. Another 30, 40 bucks, it seems to be the same uh, thing to get, you know, I mean, as far as price wise. Um, we, we are escapees. Um, we don't use their their mail forwarding service, but we do occasionally stay in Branson and different things, and we go to some of their functions on occasions out here. And we're in Quartzsite. A couple of times we've stayed at Congress uh, Escapees North Ranch, which when we do baseball, it's about a 45-minute drive. But if you can't find a campground near Surprise, then that's a good backup. Um, if this year, luckily, we're going to be within a couple of miles of baseball, so that saves a lot on fuel. Also, another another good thing when you're traveling, um, in the beginning, we use Passport America. Passport America gives you a 50% discount on your camping. It's a pretty good deal. Runs, I think it's about $30 again each month, each year. And uh, what you want to do is, is get that, but you, you've got to call them and make sure because there's a lot of restrictions on passport america they uh they sometimes only allow you to stay one or two nights um there's only the 50 percent discount during the off season there's a lot of restrictions with passport america but it, it if you stay in one campground you pretty much most of the time you're going to pay from 30 to 90 dollars a night so what you pay for Passport America, you're going to make that back the very first time you stay in a campground. We've become um, kind of the people that we stay in Walmarts, Flying J's. We love Flying J's. They have dump stations. They have their own fuel aisles, so you're not in the truck lanes. Um, they have uh, propane. They usually have a restaurant, and they have places where you can park and spend the night, and you're not sitting next to a truck aisling all night. So we've gotten to the point where we'll spend we'll spend quite a bit of time in uh, Flying J's during the uh, our travels, and also in the WalMarts. Um, we're going to do some some uh, video on that too. Um, there's been some problems in the WalMarts, and uh, we need to kind of people need to kind of uh, be a little more careful the way they they treat Walmart parking lots. Um, Walmart's very fair. We love Walmart. They treat us good. We always go in and purchase something when we go to a Walmart. Um, some people think it's just a good place to, you know, camp for two weeks and, and put out their chairs and barbecue and everything. That's not what Walmart is about. Walmart's about when you're on the road, you come in when it's dark, you get up in the morning and you leave. Um, staying there for days and days and days uh, is really, you're really uh, pushing what you should be doing. Ah, oh, next fun thing, phones and internet. When you're um, when you're traveling, you know, you, if you're living in a if you're living in a city, you can have these T-Mobiles and all that kind of stuff. But you get you get ten miles out of the city, and pretty soon you have no service. We have our internet, and we have our phones through Verizon. We have a MiFi unit, which is, you can get them on eBay for uh, about $30. And then we have 100 gigabytes for $145 a month. And wherever we're at, where Verizon service works, which is basically everywhere, um, we have internet and we have phones. And it makes it really nice. We're not trying to park somewhere where we can, you know, mooch off of a Starbucks or something like that to get internet. We don't have to worry about that. We just, my wife, we're driving down the road. She's on her, on her computer. Um, it just makes it a lot nicer. You can stream. You can, you can upload videos. You can do all this stuff from right in your motorhome, wherever you're at. A lot of times, the Internet and the campgrounds are terrible, absolutely terrible. And if you try to, well, right now here in Quartzsite with all the people here, the Internet is not the best. In another few days, everyone's going to be leaving. And... We'll go back to having really good internet. It's just been bad for about two weeks, and you just 
it's irritating, but you got to be patient. It's it's uh, only this time of year, and it's only for a short time. So also with the phones, your Verizon phones tend to work everywhere. The only place we found that Verizon doesn't work was in uh, Southwest Texas, and we had to get AT and T phones, and we could actually see the tower. And a lot of times they didn't work. So, but the Verizons wouldn't work at all. So once we left, we shut those things off. And we haven't turned them back on since. So Verizon for your phones. And if you're going to do internet, uh, the MiFi is really good. And Verizon is great. The last thing on this list is financial wise. We, um, we had a bad experience with Wells Fargo years ago. And when we decided to, to do this journey, we started looking into banks. And the only bank that is pretty much everywhere in the country is Wells Fargo. So we went and we opened a checking account with Wells Fargo. We've got direct deposit with Wells Fargo, um, which is a very important thing to have with these jobs. Because a lot of times, some of these jobs, you go to them and... Um, you, you work your job and then your last paycheck, if you're not there, if you're on the road, you don't have to worry about getting your paycheck. When we do sugar beets, Christmas trees, those type jobs, you get a bonus and it's usually a month later. But you don't want to have a check go all the way up to, to South Dakota and then have to be sent to you. You want the money when it's available. So boom, you just all of a sudden, they send you an email. Your, your money's going to be in your account. And usually two or three days later, you check and there's your money. So doing direct deposit is a great thing. Like, if, like when you work sugar beets, if you don't do that, then they give you a, a lot of times they'll give you this like little credit card thing. And if you want to get your cash out, you have to pay a fee. So to save you that fee, what you do is you get, you get the direct deposit. And like I say, Wells Fargo, probably, I don't, I don't think there's any bank I've ever really fell in love with. Um, Wells Fargo is pretty good about letting you get your cash out. You walk in, you get a, uh, an ATM card, you go in, you, you swipe that, you tell them how much money you want, they give you your cash and you're gone. And that's um, another thing you want to do, is you want to keep a certain amount of cash with you, especially when you're going to travel, for a couple of reasons. One is when you're traveling and you're buying fuel, if you're paying cash, you're getting a better price on your fuel. Um, sometimes as much, six, seven, sometimes 10 cents a gallon difference. And with this fuel hog here, um, you want to make sure you're saving money. If you're buying 50, 60 gallons at a time and you're saving six cents, you're saving three bucks. And it, it, it's not much, but it adds up as, it, as you go on and on. Every dollar is important. You want to save your money when you're working. And when we're traveling, we're spending money. The, the, the limits come off. We, go, we stop at restaurants. We always have a pile of junk to eat on the dashboard. Um, if we want to stop and see something or stop and do something, we do it. We don't worry about the money until we get to our next job and we start working. So cash is king when you're traveling. Another problem is is a lot of these uh, fuel stops, if you're going to use a credit card, you're going to swipe it at the pump. And there's a lot of, a lot of these uh, little skimmer things or scammer things where they, they can they can take your credit card and get your information and you don't even know what's been done. And now someone else is traveling the other way using your credit card fill in their tank. So what, what you want to do is you want to be, you, you don't know these places. When you, when you get to somewhere, you start figuring out the places that are good to go. And you talk to the locals. And you decide this is a good place for fuel. It's a good place to eat. And then you'll feel a lot more comfortable using your credit card when you're in town. So that's going to be the last thing I'm going to discuss is credit cards. We have a credit card that we use for everything except for when we're traveling. We, we buy our groceries, we pay all of our bills on our credit card, we do everything. Everything is done online. When we go to Walmart and buy our groceries, we use our credit card. And the reason is, is that way we're, we're paying, we usually pay our credit card off every, well, we always pay our credit card off every, every month, and we'll make usually two payments. And that way we can keep track of how much we're spending, we don't have to carry a lot of cash when we're out of the motorhome or we're in a, in a place where we're staying. Um, and it just makes it a lot simpler. You, you, you get uh, points, you get all kinds of things. When you're spending that kind of money, if you're spending 
between your groceries and all your bills and everything, if you're spending $1,500 a month and you're paying that off every month, that's a good positive on your credit report. So we use a credit card for that. And that's our main, main for everything. Going out to di dinner, groceries, uh, internet, television, medical insurance, everything goes on that credit card. So we know exactly what we spend every month. So that's uh, the basics of my list. Um, I know it's kind of a long one. I hope you guys wrote some of this stuff down or you can come back and watch it again. But these are good, good things to do. If, if you're going to do this lifestyle, if you leave with these items done, you will find that it will make your life much simpler. You won't have as many problems, you know, dealing with the, like the dogs or your medical or any of that kind of stuff. You want to make life as simple as possible because that's what this life is about. Your stress level when you leave, when you, when you give the keys to the new owner of your house or whatever you're going to do, when you drive away, your stress level is going to begin to drop. And you're going to start looking at things a lot differently. You're going to slow down. You're not going to be wanting to be the first one to the red light. You're going to be want to be the last one because you're afraid you're going to miss something. Enjoy this lifestyle and enjoy your life. Enjoy the people you meet and the places you see. So thank you. Have a great day. We'll see you soon again. Thank you. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here